as more and more people use their smartphones to tell the time, watchmakers are worried that the old-fashioned timepiece may be going out of style, but the global market looks pretty robust. In fact, the Swiss watch industry estimates that the global market is worth $21 billion, and new figures out show that across the world, demand for luxury watches, brands like Rolex and Cartier, grew nearly 6% last year. And ladies' watches seem to have the most appeal. That sector grew nearly 8%. And apparently, there's nothing quite like making your friends jealous of your new watch. The photo-sharing app Instagram is the most popular method for sharing pictures of the most expensive watches in terms of social media. All right, joining us now, David Sadiq, founder and CEO of the Digital Luxury Group, which just put out the Luxury Watch Report. David, good to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. So David, we saw that the global luxury watch market worth around $21 billion. What's your outlook for the sector as a whole? You know, that's a really important point. We have to just remember that the Swiss watch exports were only a 10 billion market nearly 10 years ago. So from 10 billion, it grew to 20 billion right now, 21 billion to be precise, and we have an outlook for this industry to become a 30 billion market before 2020. Okay, so what is driving this growth? You as, know, as we said, we thought people are using their watches less because they're looking at their smartphones for the time. You know, you have like two key drivers. First of all, like for all the luxury products, you have Asia, mm -hmm. Asia and China more specifically. And the second element is the women's segment. Ladies' watches are growing fast and they represent an untapped potential for Swiss watch brands. Before we get into the lady factor, let's focus on the regions that are seeing the most growth. We saw that according to your report, demand for luxury watches up 5.7%. Other than China, which areas are seeing the most growth? You know, you have like a lot of places that generates an interesting level of growth, but the reality is that the key influence of this growing market is coming from Asia and China more specifically. Not only China domestically speaking, but also thanks to all the Chinese travelers buying more and more watches in Europe and the US. Now, Brazil was expected to be a thriving luxury watch market, but uh, the report shows some disappointing sales there. Why? What's going on? You know, Brazil has been like a difficult question because in one hand for beauty brands, car brands and so on, it has been a very uh, appealing and very successful market. But the reality is that as far as watchers are concerned, <coughs> it's not working well. Inflation is super high, mm -hmm. nearly 5% last year of inflation in Brazil. You still have high domestic taxes. And the reality is that those Brazilian, wealthy Brazilian travelers are buying a lot, a lot outside of the Brazil, meaning in the US, in Europe, and so on. Well, you mentioned the US and Europe. Now, those have been the traditional strong market for luxury watches. But according to your report, a decline in sales in Germany, Japan, and the US. Why? You know, you have a decline, it's true, in terms of interest, meaning that the level of desirability expressed for brand is declining, and maybe that the economical condition of some of the market, maybe also that the interest for some of the brands has uh, slightly declined, but the reality is that at the global level, this industry continues to grow, to grow at a two-digit rate. Okay, well, you said China responsible for a lot of this growth. Which brands in particular are thriving in China? You know, you still have a king as far as the watch industry is concerned. Mm -hmm. It's Rolex. Mm -hmm. And Rolex remain the king nearly everywhere. Middle East, like South America, US, and so on. But in Asia, it's interesting because you have Omega. And Omega, which is the leading brand of the Swatch the Group, watch. is exactly, it's the Bond watch. And Omega is doing extremely well in Asia, as opposed, for example, to the US, where Omega is not at the moment performing really well. Now, in terms of ladies' watches, you've mentioned that that's been a big increase in terms of the market. Which brands have the most traction there? You know, not only the ladies' segment is growing at a really fast pace, but the good news for the US is that the American market remains the biggest segment. And you have like a few brands doing extremely well. Rolex is still the most sought after brand as far as uh, ladies watches are concerned. But you also have other brands that are doing extremely well. We can mention like Cartier, for example, as being a very strong uh, brand within the women's segment. Seven and a half percent increase in the ladies watch market. What is driving that? 
Maybe I, I think you have like a few different things, but I think gifting is probably one of the important parts. Hey, I'd, I'd I love think, a nice Cartier as a I, gift. I, I think that you know it's becoming like more and more important right now to own like a nice uh, a watch or a few nice watches, and I think that uh, this market uh, is like understanding that women are becoming more and more important, more and more influential, and that maybe they put too much energy and money try to convince men. Okay. and that there is a untapped potential with the women's segment. Definitely untapped potential. Very quickly, your report focuses a lot on the influence of social media in the luxury watch market. What's your number one takeaway there? I think the number one takeaway is that brands have a, an opportunity to start engaging into a daily or weekly conversation with their customers through social media. And I think that this represents a great opportunity to further build the awareness of the Swiss watch industry and also to generate more interest, desire, and at the end of the day, sales for Swiss watches. Okay. We always have time for you on the show. Thank you so much, David Sadiq, founder and CEO of the Digital Luxury Group.